All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, we are going to be uh, learning how to use Algolia Search on a Gatsby blog. And uh, our teacher today is Bram Adams. Bram, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Jason. Yeah. And uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, maybe your path into, into technology a little bit, and then we can talk about Algolia as well? Sure. So I consider my path pretty linear. I actually did start co coding until my sophomore year of college. Uh, I came in thinking I was going to be pre-med and that was a huge mistake because I wasn't ready for like the <laughs> level of work that it actually takes to commit to being a pre-med student. So uh, I also really enjoyed computer science. I had like left a little thing for myself saying like, oh, I think comp sci could be a good option for me. So I switched over to computer science, which was pretty great. Uh, I had a lot of good times and joined hackathons and stuff like that. Uh, and then after graduation, I was a software engineer for a few years at HBO. Um, and then I became a developer relations uh, slash advocate. Some companies had different names for it uh, mm -hmm. here at Algolia. And then I transitioned recently over into the education team to kind nice. of be more focused on kind of like the education platform because it's really cool stuff. Uh, cool. I, yeah, but, I didn't realize you were in education, which is even better because uh, that's exactly what we're going to do here today. Um, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so let's talk about Algolia a little bit. So um, Algolia, I know that Algolia is like, it's like for search, but it's hard to know what that means because like, what does search mean? Like, what's the scope of what Algolia can do? That's a great question. So honestly, search is more about discovery than anything is the best way that I like to think about it. When you're a user and you're kind of interacting with someone's website or platform or application, in a lot of ways, you're kind of just like looking for what you're looking for. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. go to a site and they already have something in mind and they're looking for the answer, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes finding that answer can be a little bit convoluted. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily... Uh, straightforward as to how to like get from point A to point B. So what Algolia does is that we really kind of like try and simplify that process for the developers uh, and the, the business users of our websites or of our app and also for the, the users themselves, right? So we really focus on speed and relevance um, mm -hmm. and like handling, like as you say, you're scrolling through the site here, like handling typos and things like that, uh, as well as kind of like giving uh, the people who are actually running the site kind of insights into what people are searching for uh, all through the, their all through our API. So basically, uh, we just strive to make every search just really uh, like a good experience for users. You know what I mean? Like search should be really quick. You should find the results that you're looking for instantly, like when you're on Google, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Or if you're trying to like uh, have like find, find things that are only relevant to a certain person, then you should be able to do that too. So that's kind of like what we, what we really focus on. Okay, cool. So, um, all right. So I think what we wanted to do today was just kind of a, a proof of concept of how you would set this up in Gatsby. And so yeah. I think what, what people would typically use, um, or at least what I see most often is, um, where is it? The doc search. Mm -hmm. And so the doc search is not what we're going to use today, right? Because the, it will actually, can you clarify, like, what is, what is the doc search and how is it different from like a regular search? Sure. So doc search is kind of like, uh, if you go to the react docs uh, for people who haven't spent time around the react documentation or some other kind of, uh, documentations, the search that's running there is actually powered by Algolia. So doc search is one of our open source initiatives. Um, and basically it does this thing called federated search. So it's actually searching through different indexes and kind of combining the things that you see there into like their, their parent components, right? So you see like hooks at a glance, building your own hooks has like two results using the state hooks has like two results as well. Right. So first is like a kind of like a regular search that someone might implement for their e-commerce site, or someone might put on to like a media website or something like that. A lot mm -hmm. of the time people are searching through one index, right? So like, gotcha. you'll be like, uh, here's a list of like characters from Star Wars or Game of Thrones or something like that, right? And then you type in Luke Skywalker and it will just pull up Luke Skywalker. Whereas this is kind of like splitting it and saying like, let me search every index for Luke Skywalker, which I don't think it react has anything. Actually, do you want to check that? Just look at this. It's, it's, yeah, probably not. Nothing for Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, cool. So, so this though, to set this up, like this is basically all managed through Algolia, right? Like you don't, yes, you yep. don't control this on your own website. Yes, for Doc Search, Doc Search is controlled by us because we we also run crawlers for an update. So basically, what will happen is that your documentation will, you know, the HTML will change, um, mm. and we'll actually go through all the HTML pages and like run our crawler like on a cron job effectively and like pick out the new data and then update Doc Search for you. Gotcha. Versus like when you're running your own index, it's it's really up to the user to decide when they're going to update their objects or change their index or whatever. Okay, cool. So what we're going to be doing is using the search API, right? Or what what are yeah. we going to be doing today? I think we're we're gonna we're gonna add search to a Gatsby site, right? That's like we we have a few plugins that are 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 uh, directly tied into Gatsby because a lot of us are really like vibing super hard with Gatsby over here at Algolia. So we've been trying to like work on building like front ends and back ends for Gatsby. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can use the plugin to make some searchable stuff. Very cool. So um, this plugin, is this the right one? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna be working with this. And then to get us started, I guess we should just build a quick site, right? Yeah, let's do it. All yeah, right, let's, so let's get started. I'm going to do is I'm going to run, um, let's see, what, what node version am I using? Um, that should, well, let's, let's not, let's not tempt fate. I set up node 12 yesterday and now I'm worried that anything that's not node 12 is going to break on me. So let's do I feel that. Node environments uh, are like super scary to kind of manage. There's just so much that's going on and <laughs> I've had to completely delete node and reinstall node like more times than I would like to admit. Um, <laughs> yeah. What I love is uh, I, I started using NVM and I've heard there's another tool called N, which is um, uh -huh. people seem to like even more. I haven't tried it yet, but um, it's, yeah, it's great. So have you uh, used NPX at all? I love NPX. Um, so what, mm -hmm. what NVM and N do is they like allow you to manage your node environment and they'll allow you to install like multiple versions of node. Um, mm -hmm. And then NPX lets you just execute anything from the node package registry without having to download it, or I guess it, without having to install it, it like downloads and executes and then destroys the temporary download. Um, it was, uh, it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. I actually, I was just on the phone with um, Kat Marchand from NPM yesterday. And uh -huh. she was talking to me about that CLI stuff and like what she, what she worked on at NPM. And it's just like, it's such an incredible suite of tools. And she basically built all that stuff solo. Like I'm always blown away by how much work. That's wild. That team got really? Done. She built all of that? That's, that's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Um, and she was talking about some stuff she's working on now. That's like, holy crap. Um, I don't know if any of it's public, but so I'm not going to talk about it, but like yeah. tweet, <laughs> Spoiler tweet alert, a cat right? and be like, yo, tell me about the new shit. Cause it's, <laughs> like, it's really, really powerful. Um, that okay, is so, so tight. I'm going to create a new site. This is just going to be like our basic, um, our basic kind of blog. Let's see. I'll use yarn. Um, and then while we're waiting for this to install, somebody asked, how is the website so great and who designed it? So that's a question about oh, the Algolia great. site. Yeah, I can, I can, I go, I'll just, just respond over here. So yeah, basically, thank you for, uh, Oran how do I say that name? Oranus 007? Am I saying that right? Is that or Oranus I, 007? Yes. I think yeah, that's I think right. I, think it's I don't close. know. Twitch, Twitch <laughs> usernames are really hard. <laughs> it's, it's like, cause like you can do any combinations of letters and things like that. So saying the names, I, I have super respect for people who actually know how to pronounce these things. Um, <laughs> So basically, yeah, our design team is really on point. And that was actually one of the, like, one of the first things that I really noticed when I started reaching out and talking to Algolia when I was applying to the company in the first place is that uh, the, the design is very consistent. You know what I mean? So like the number one design rule at Algolia is consistency. Mm -hmm. So whether it's through our documentation or through our homepage or through the slides that you would see to our external people or like the, our customers and kind of like interacting with them, we always try and like to keep a consistent kind of a, a styling. So our design team crushes it. Shout out to our design team. I don't know how to design anything. I'm really bad at that kind of thing. <laughs> I've used Sketch like twice. So <laughs> like that's, you can imagine. <laughs> I'm um, not good at design. <laughs> I just realized I used the wrong starter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head out here. I'm going to just delete this whole folder. And then I'm going to try now. again. Yeah. Um, we're going to do Gatsby Gatsby's. new, uh, Gatsby Algolia, and we're going to use Gatsby JS, Gatsby starter blog. 
because otherwise I've definitely I'm used have to... starter blog before too. I've definitely used starter blog. I've, yeah, I've, I, I actually have played around with it myself. It's super cool. I love starter blog and it has a Kyle's picture on it, which is great. Do you yeah. talk to him a lot? Kyle? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kyle, um, Kyle and I are like, we would, we just, the whole team actually just spent a whole week in New York city. Um, which I'm realizing now, like you're in New York city. I was like, oh man, we should, we should have high fived. Oh, we should um, hung out. We <laughs> <should've> hung out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we did, we did an all hands meeting in a, a Gatsby days, um, like community event where we had about a hundred people from around the community came in and we did some presentations, had a couple folks from agencies. Like we had delicious simplicity talking about some of the cool stuff they're doing and what it enables for them as an agency. Um, and then the, the team from, um, Harry's came and talked about like mm. the shop Flamingo website, which was super cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it was a lot of fun. And then we just spent a week like doing, doing company planning, all that good stuff. Um, all right. That's so awesome. I've got this That's installed. Let me, <laughs> let me get this thing started. Let's take a look at what we're, what we're using as our jump off point here. And, Let's rock and roll. All right. So we're running static queries, doing all the things, and it's going to hopefully result in a website, which we will open here, localhost 8000, and dang, that's big. Hey. All right, let's make that a little bit smaller. And okay, so we've got three posts here. Um, and these have a lot of content in them, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to write up some uh, some search stuff to make this function. Yeah, um, let's do it. All right, so let me open this up, let's see here. And in here we have, let's just take a look at what we're starting with. So this starts off with, with quite a bit of stuff actually. So, um, there's a lot of dependencies. <laughs> you've got like Gatsby and Gatsby image, uh, the plugin feed is so that you've got an RSS feed, um, analytics, you know, you know why you have analytics manifest and offline is so that it runs as a progressive web app. Um, mm -hmm. react helmet is so that we can manage search engine optimization. Sharp is for image handling. Um, there's also the transformer sharp down here. The typography plugin is what handles like all of this kind of vertical spacing and the, the font sizes, um, mm -hmm. copying linked files. Uh, it's like, I don't know if I need to walk through all of these, uh, most of this, like down, once we get into here, this is to like load the blog and then all this. What does Smarty stuff. Pass do? Re remark Smarty, is that for Markdown? Yeah. So any of the remark plugins are to handle Markdown and mm. Smarty Pants gives you smart quotes. So if you type like a regular. Um, like these types of quotes, they'll get turned mm -hmm. into the curly ones. Um, Prism JS is syntax highlighting images is so that images in Markdown get turned into Gatsby image, which is optimized for like lazy loading and all that good stuff. Um, right, 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 and then right. the rest of this is just, you know, we've got our typefaces for typography, um, all the other dep dependencies that we need to make that function. Um, and that's pretty much what's going on in here. So I believe what we need to do next, right? Is we just start installing this or do I need to, I need yeah, to create some things, rockets. don't I? Yeah. We, we, we want to go to the Algolia dashboard and actually create an account first. So we can go to right. algolia.com slash dashboard or you can, yeah, I think What's free trial that? also works. I actually haven't Wait. used free trial in a while. Let's see what it's happens goes with free community, trial. But yeah, let's just see what happens. I think we're going to need to create an account anyway. Yeah. Well, me... cause like what happens is we have a community plan, right? And the community plan is like free forever. And it's like, a hundred thousand records and a hundred thousand operations or something around those numbers. Uh -huh. uh, so you can imagine that a record is like, if you were indexing the Harry Potter characters, you know what I mean? Harry Potter would be one, Ron Weasley would be another, right? So that's two records right there. Gotcha. And then each queries is an operation. So an operation is considered a search operation or an indexing operation. So an indexing operation is adding the record to the, um, to the index in the first place. And then a search operation actually happens at every keystroke. So one of the things that we try and do at Algolia is we try and make sure that every single keystroke will return um, the correct kind of like relevant data. So it does a lot of calculating beforehand to kind of like do what I think might be referred to as kind of like a look ahead in other forms of computer science. But basically all it's doing is it's kind of like making a best guess and using like typo like calculations and word proximity calculations to say like if you type in H R Y it assumes you mean Harry Potter you know what I mean so it's gonna pop Harry Potter up to the top there oh gotcha little little indexing indexing science it's actually pretty cool our uh, CTO wrote an eight part blog series called Inside the Engine 
where uh, he discusses all of the the kind of like the the math and like the building of Algolia in the first place, uh, and it's it's extremely it's kind of intense actually, <laughs> like a lot of stuff there to like break down. Boy. But yeah, yeah, that's I mean, and it's so cool like how how complicated these things can get. Um, yeah, they can get I'm super assuming this is just what I I just want to do. Yeah. That seems right. The one that's, that's closest close, to that's you. close to me. <laughs> so let's do that, and then I'm building a media site, right? Media content sounds right. Yeah, that sounds close. And we definitely want to build this within the next uh, <laughs> seventy-five minutes. I think it is. So. <laughs> we're we're um, rocking it. All right. So then I need to go to my dashboard, like you said, mm -hmm. and then I do what? Okay, so great. So we're on the dashboard, so you can skip the tutorial. I'm the tutorial. Sorry, you, you are my <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> uh, so basically what we're going to get see here is, do you want me to kind of like run through it, or do you want to just like get to the beef and just like, like let's let's get things done? Um, I mean, a, like a quick overview, but uh, I want to make sure okay. we don't run out of time. So, Right. So an overview of the overview tab. This is just quickly where all your searches are going to be uh, and like kind of like the metrics for like the top search. So you can imagine that if you're running like, a search like, um, I don't know, uh, like a website that sells clothes, you wanna know if people are actually buying your pants, you know what I mean? So right, you can see right, if they're right. searching for pants or if they're searching for shirt. And if they are searching for pants, are they getting no results? Like that'll all show up here, you know gotcha. what I mean? So like this this kind of like shows them their click-through rate too. Mm -hmm. So basically like when, you know, you go and search for blue pants, it'll be like cool blue pants, click. And then they'll be like, that's a successful search sure, and, and yeah. based by your opinion. So the, the tab we only really need is the indices tab, the one with a little check mark next to it. Uh, yeah, that one, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna create an index. So the index that we're gonna create, what do we wanna name it, blog? Yeah, let's call it. Whatever, Gatsby, whatever you wanna it call it. Blog. All right. Yep, great. So now we just have an index. So you can actually swing over to our uh, uh, configuration and we can kind of see a little bit of what's happening. So so what's There's happening here is we have the new records that we can add. Uh, okay. We can add them manually, but we're going to be adding them using the plugin. Uh, these okay. searchable attributes are the different fields that people can search against. So okay. imagine that it's just like a JSON object. Uh, and then you just kind of like are able to kind of like pick and choose which kind of fields you want to search. Okay. Uh, so that's handled through like that. And then there's a bunch of other stuff that we probably don't need to get into until we build it. If we have extra time, we can talk about all this, this cool stuff, but yeah. it, like with like stop words and synonyms and segmentation and, uh, disjunctive versus conjunctive, like search turns out to be like pretty hard because natural language is pretty hard. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of different things that we added to like, make sure that we can try and hit as many use cases as possible. Right. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so let's rock it. So you can grab your API keys from the API key section. And and I need to pull this off so, screen, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's best to move. Let me pull this uh, off screen, grab my API keys. Um, search. All right, so I need, let's see, I need, so, um, let me copy this. I'm going to create a dot env dot. We're going to do it in, uh, we'll, we'll just run builds, I guess. Um, and so I'm going to need that. So I need an app ID and I'm going to just pull these over and, and add those as well. So let me get Rock this. On. Um, let's see here. App ID. It's happening in secret. Yeah, I know. I, I think like app a... ID is one, two, three, four. I can read mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then do I want the, uh, the search only API key or do I need to create, do I need like an admin API key? That's a great question. So search only API key is actually for the front end and admin is for uh, indexing. So basically search is fine. If you wanted to show your search API key, that's fine because it's okay. basically a public search thing, right? Versus the uh, admin API key, which allows people to actually interact with your index. So gotcha. you don't usually want people interacting with your stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? But they are, they're allowed to search it, right? So it's like kind of like read versus write. Okay, I guess cool. is the best way to describe it. And then the um, the index name, is that just like the name I chose? Yeah, that was just the name that we just chose just now. Okay, and is it case sensitive? Uh, yeah, case okay. sensitive. I'm pretty All sure. Right. I'm actually not 100% sure. But so I, I, have, so. <laughs> I have set up my, my environment variables. We should be 
Hurrah. should be good to go here. Um, so that's now set up, which means I can get out of the that section. Let me go over here, and then I'll pull this back um, into... Yeah, I'll pull this back over so we can see it again. Um, all right, so now I have my blog. I have my uh, .env .production setup here, and that's mm -hmm. got the values in it. And mm -hmm. we are ready to do the next thing. So, yeah, let's rock it. All right. So the next thing is, oh, go ahead. Sorry. What were you well, actually, no, I was going to ask you, what, what is the next thing? <laughs> okay. So the next thing in terms of this plugin, uh, so we didn't install it, right? Did we add it? I, can't even I don't think we, we did. Let's, let's go ahead yeah. and do that. So we are going to add the plugin. Perf. So yeah, so basically what's going to happen is after this plugin is added, we're going to be able to use uh, Gatsby's powerful GraphQL to link to send that data to Algolia effectively. So if you scroll down a little bit, there's like this little my query guy. So basically what's happening with this thing is that it's just querying GraphQL the same way that Gatsby does it when it's building, right? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna grab the actual data from that build and then it's going to uh, insert it into the index. It's pretty much all that's happening uh, from like a high level perspective. Okay. Um, the, the the transformer and stuff that you see down there and the, the method below is pretty much just mapping. It's just basically just grabbing the GraphQL uh, JSON data and then turning them each into their own separate object. Okay. Um, so, so we're just going to kind of like implement that, I guess. So the first thing that I did when I was playing around with this plugin was I actually went to graph IQL and I wanted to see like what kind of data I could grab from uh, Gatsby that I could put into an Algolia index, right? Yeah, so, let's do it. So we'll go into Yarn Develop here. I love it. And then out on this side, once it boots up, we've got the, the GraphQL set up. So let's jump in here. All right. So that, let's take a look at what we've got. Um, in the query, we can get files, site pages, plugins, directory, markdown, remark. Mark. So probably we want all markdown remark, right? That, that looks promising. <laughs> all right, so we wrote our blog. Our, our blog is written in markdown, so it seems like we probably want the markdown stuff. Um, let's just get everything. I'm gonna get the nodes out and let's see what's available. We want... Um, Probably like the excerpt, huh? And like the name, front matter maybe? Yeah, let's grab the excerpt and we'll get the front matter. What's in here? We'll get the title, maybe a description. What do these look like? Yeah, that looks good to me. All right, so the description, that could be useful. We've got the excerpt, which is kind of useful. Um, what if we want to show the whole post? like? So this is something I'm curious about. If I run this, mm -hmm. now we've got a whole dump of of this, right? But I don't mm -hmm. necessarily want mm -hmm. people to search like that class name. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have time to solve that problem today? Because I would love to solve that problem. Honestly, I think that we should definitely attempt to solve it if uh, you're down to do it. I think that it's 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 definitely going to be fun. My initial assessment would honestly be that we would download a library that sanitizes HTML by just getting rid of everything and replacing it with just like nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's basically so like, in my like mind, strip tags, basically. Yeah. Like we're just going to cut all the script tags. Cause like, you're right. It's just like the most of the HTML is just like the, the post. Okay. That's interesting though. Cause we have a lot of like, I mean, everything that's not in a tag looks like it's it's usable. I don't know what's mm -hmm. what's what's below the the style tags down there and stuff like that. Oh, that's a lot of text. <laughs> um, well, this this is all um, like for an image, so this is like okay. the the base sixty four encoded version of the image that we use to do the blur up technique, and then these are all the the different source sizes so that you can load it at the right resolution. Um, th okay, this gosh, is what that yeah. Gatsby Gatsby remark images. It takes any mm -hmm. like markdown embedded images and does that for you. That's um, dope. I really like the lazy loading. It's a really cool feature and it reminds me of Medium. I remember when I first saw it on Medium and I was like, oh, this is a really cool idea. You know what I mean? It, it makes it feel like the, the TTI, the time to interactive, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. is so much lower than it actually is. So <laughs> I, I yeah. love it. I'm, I'm yeah. a huge fan. 
Um, okay. Uh, and so this is going to bring up a whole other thing, which is like, um, how we, how we can index all this. All right. So we, we've got content. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. we want to index like, let's just say, well, maybe I do want to just grab all of these and let people search all of this content. Cause each of these things mm -hmm. seems like it could be relevant. Mm -hmm. So the next step would be to pretty much just copy the query that you already made just there. So like on the left side, the all marked down mark, yeah, that, that, okay. part, that thing. Uh, and then we can actually go back into the little my query thing that we saw before. Yeah. And then we're going to replace my query with that. And this is the thing we just did. Fig. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so right. fun to like talk a keyboard thing because like I'm trying to explain what I would just type. You know what yeah. I mean? like, All right. So we need to get our, um, we need to get this. And so mm -hmm. we're going to grab the, the environment variable. So .env allows us to get these .env files. And mm -hmm. then typically it's only going to look for something called .env. But in our case, we want to get the one that matches our, our environment. So I'm going to say path is dot env dot. And because I'm not, I don't want to necessarily have to uh, like run a build. I want to, I want to be able to just test this. So I'm going sure. to have it um, run always. And then what you would do at the end is you would just copy this out to get the node env. But this is so that even when we run a build, it's still going to grab this, this content and try to index it. Um, I have a question about that. Does yeah. that production, so do you have to add a production flag when you're doing Gatsby build, or does it already know so that it's building for production? When you run Gatsby develop, which is what we're running now, it sets development. Mm -hmm. When you run Gatsby build, it sets production. And so okay. by default, yeah, by default, this is the way that we, that we kind of run this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You have control to an extent over that, but like, because a build has to be optimized, like we have to pass production to React. We have to pass production to a couple other libraries that cause them to build like the right level of, uh, of like optimization. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of like, we, you have some control over that, but it's, it's ultimately like the, you know, those, those flags are, you'd want to set a different environment variable if you wanted to check on that. Um, right. Okay, so we have a we have our, our environment variables, which means that we have access to the Algolia keys. And so Great. then in here, we're gonna set up a query. And so this is just gonna be right out here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm gonna call this like Algolia search query. I like your font on uh, it VSC. Is, uh, it's operator mono, and I love this Operator one. mono. That's dope. I think I'm gonna try it out. So this is our query. All right, and then I'm gonna jump yep. down into here. Okay, so then then we have to set up another object. So queries. Mm -hmm. So this is if you're running multiple queries. You know what I mean? So like, oh, I mean, I see what's happening. But it's an index of one in our case. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then what I actually should call this is like blog query, because if mm -hmm. we had multiples, we would want to have the ability to, Specific, to right. tell which one we're looking at. So then um, do we need a transformer on this? I assume we're going to yeah. eventually. Yes. So we're going to want to like, kind of like split out the array from what we have into what it's expecting. So we're just going to map effectively the, the data. Uh, and we had it from, was it all site matter or something? All markdown. Yeah, that was all it. Mark, <laughs> mark, dot nodes dot map. Actually, I don't even think we need that. I think we just need nodes. Um, then, uh, and then the name. index name to target is, is yeah, is our be. Golia. What was it called? Algolia index name. You're fast at the keyboard. <laughs> I got to make sure that I don't, uh, like I, I have this bad habit of saying I'm going to be really secretive about my API keys and then I have to check it. And so I like open the file. Like, Damn it. <laughs> so I, I did that on, uh, oh on last God. week's stream and I had to go figure out how to like invalidate AWS keys, which was not super fun. Oh, that is not fun. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, so this one's optional. It overrides the main index name. So we don't actually need that one. I'm going to I'm going to drop those both for now because we're not using right, it. Right, right. Yeah, right. usually if people will have like multiple indexes like we saw on like the React website when we were looking at the docs, like right. that would be something that you would need to do. Okay, perfect. Um, but, 
you wouldn't yet for our case. So here we're not going to use it. And then we're going to add the Algolia plugin. So I'm going to get down yeah. into, let's collapse this and add it right at the top. And we're going to resolve Gatsby plugin Algolia. And the options are going to be what? We want, I'm just going to copy paste these out. Yeah, no, honestly, that's what I do too. Queries and chunk size is copyable too, because queries is the list of our queries. Got and it. then chunk size is just a default thing, but basically it's 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 chunking the number of things it's indexing for a matter of time. Yeah, I don't know actually how much time, but let's just pretend it's a second. So it'll only okay. upload a thousand a second to your index. Oh, I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what is that it? Are we done? Did we have we yeah. indexed this site? We've done it. We well, we gotta we gotta build and see if it actually sends it. But other All than right. that, then yeah. Let's find out. Let's do a build. I'm gonna do a build. Did it do the thing? Oh, it says, I think it's doing it. I think it's, it's I think it's it after now. the JavaScript is built in the CSS bundles, if I remember correctly. Oh, here yeah, we go. Yeah, there we go. Yay. All right, okay, so, so it did things. See. Let's go and in back here. back in your dashboard, refresh it, and it should have some data for us to look at. Look at that. Oh, snap. Okay, so. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> now, if I start searching this, is it gonna show me Mm hmm so maybe like uh hello world or blogging yeah it's like already kind of like searching uh oh, through the, the ones oh and look at this too it like it stripped it the response that it gave back oh i did not know that was going to happen that's pretty Doesn't... great though <laughs> that's that's news to me <laughs> okay so that's that's pretty rad okay um so let's not worry about let, let, I mean, maybe let's just start adding a search box to the site and we'll see how this, yeah, how this goes. And then we can, we can mess with the transformer if we need to. So oh, Gatsby man. is I've, powered by react, correct? It is indeed powered by react. I, okay. Great. I got to tell you a story. So mm -hmm. I, on my site, I set up a, um, I set up a whole search thing. And so like, oh, dude, that's dope. and I have severely overcomplicated it. And so because I couldn't get my posts to look right, I've just been showing uh -huh. the excerpt only. And I'm like kind of I'm feeling a little dumb right now because looking at uh, looking at how easy that was, I'm like, well, I over over engineered the holy crap out of that. <laughs> well, honestly, honestly, I think that it's it's you're not wrong in the sense that when indexes get pretty big, it becomes a problem. So each of these uh, records, you see that little check mark that's orange that says three point two four kilobytes. So it's basically saying like, okay, like you know, we have a, a size cap that's like I think ten kilobytes per record okay. or something like that. So what'll end up happening for someone who has like blog, let's say like you have like a lot of images in your post and you have like a lot of data that mm -hmm. you're trying to show with the search, what'll end up happening actually is that we'll split those into different records and then we'll use something called distinct to link them back to the parent record, if that makes oh, sense. Okay. It's kind of like it's like a tree of records that'll each hold a paragraph. But then they'll all be pointing back to their parent and be like, yo, like, I think they're searching for my paragraph, but I'm linked to this parent article. So when you click it, it'll be the parent article. If that makes sense. Does yeah. That make sense? Yeah. No, I, I definitely understand. Um, let Okay. So let's get this thing running. And then what I'd like mm -hmm. to do is take one of these blog posts and just like copy paste it a bunch of times so that it gets too big for a single index. And then let's play and with that. Um, I love it. I love it. I'm into it. All right. So we, we've got, let's see, close that. Um, we've got this running where we've got indexes, but we don't have let me, um, you know what I'm going to do to make sure that we don't mm -hmm. overrun our, our thing is I actually am going to do the node end so that when we run a develop, it doesn't like fire off a, a bunch of queries. Um, right. And doesn't so, re-index things all the time. Yeah. So let's do yarn develop. This should skip the Algolia part, I think. Hopefully, that's the dream. Oh, I think it's going to explode actually because it's not going to have the variables that we need. Or it did nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like everything be... everything ends up fine sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's it's set to only run in uh, develop or production mode. Um, okay, so we have a blog. Our blog mm -hmm. has content. We need a search box. So how would one go about getting such a thing? 
That's a great question. So the, the first answer I would say to that uh, is because we're using a React site. So Algolia has a lot of different flavors for the different JavaScript ice cream flavors that exist. Uh, so we have React, we have Angular, we have Vue, we have Vanilla as well. Okay. So you can all find those on our on our docs. Oh, docs. Uh, so if you go to the, the docs.algolia.com. I need this one, docs.algolia.com. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. uh, then type in React. It'll take you to our uh, React reference, like this React one? Instant or Search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick yeah, any, like any of it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the React library, uh, yeah. and then we're going to be able to use the widgets to power an Instant Search UI on our website. Okay. Uh, so the way to rock that is to first install it, which I think the installation should be somewhere on this page, but I don't know where. <laughs> oh, there it is. All right. Cool. So we're going to install. Okay. Yeah. You copy. These. You can. You can. Yeah. Use yarn as well. Yarn. Add these. And, then... and while this is running, basically what we see here is like so. This was the that's your app ID right there, and that's your actual search client API key. So this, this auto loads it stuff. into the documentation. So that's already that's the public stuff, right? So again, like we were saying, it's like no big deal if anyone sees that. Hold up, is this um, this is my yes. actual stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice, nice touch, Algolia. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna grab this, and then I can put this. Let's see, that's not quite gonna do what I want, but it'll get us close enough. Let me go to the index page mm -hmm. um, and we'll just add this search. Let's see, drop this in here. Um, let me move these up above and then I can create that. And let's just take this and drop it right in to, uh, what do you think? Let's put it here. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So let's see what happens if I just drop this straight in. Does it have the components inside the search client? I think it did, right? Looks yeah, like it. Yeah, search box and hits. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be good. I'm so excited. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens right out of the box. So we've got. Oh, search. Look at that. <laughs> There's but, no way this right, is that right. easy. Okay, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna intentionally complicate this because this is going way too well. Uh, let's do <laughs> blogging. Oh, hold well, on. Well, our, our hits aren't actually showing up right now, so we do already have a problem where it's like, hmm, like where's the where the hits at? So yeah. my first guess would be that it's like trying to replace the hits of your uh, a hit is basically like a return from a query. Um, so I think that it's trying to replace the HTML that's already on your page and it's running into some issue trying to like do that. Is it, so, so are we getting like yeah. a, are we getting console errors? Let's see. Maybe. Close that. Console. Um, Aha. Algolia looks like the, the DSN there. So basically whenever it's searching, it's saying, hmm, I can't find the thing that you're looking for. So let's, let's maybe it might be a problem with the search client actually. So that would be my first guess. Okay. Do I need to do some? Mm. Yeah, so if we go back to the code itself and then we look at the search client, uh, search did we copy that over? If you scroll up. Search client. Okay, so we have the search client, Algolia search. Oh, we have to, oh, we already imported Algolia search. Um, yeah, we got Algolia search. We got these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, oh, we have to do an index name. We never said which index we're going to be searching against. So when you're in the search box, uh, oh look at that. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. <laughs> so it's probably looking for that demo e-commerce and can't find it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's do that. So that's our index is the blog. I'm going to. I don't even need to stop and restart because it should be mm -hmm. hot reloaded. And there you go. There's your hits. So if you search there, it'll just start working again. So you can search for blogging. Great. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to actually replace the HTML that you see for new beginnings, my second post and stuff yeah. with the actual hits. And then that'll kind of be like a good spot to kind of like do highlighting and stuff like that too. So yeah. Well, actually... especially, and we'll have to make this kind of 
look nice, right? So right. Um, right. maybe the first thing we can do, it, are we going to be able to like pass in data? So if I wanted to show search results as like this with highlighting? Mm -hmm. Um, yep, we okay. can do that. So, so let's yeah. turn this so into a I, component. I actually then. know the answer because I've already built this before. But if you want to like figure this out in real time, we can totally do that too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, th so I think yeah, what I want to uh, do mm -hmm. is my my guess here is that I want to take this and turn it into a component, and then just feed in all the data as props, so that we. That is an amazing guess. All right. That, is, that is the number one guess of the century, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna create a new component. We're going to call this uh, post preview. And in it, I'm going to import React from React. And then we're going to see what we're missing. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Let's do const post preview. And then that's going to need some props that we don't have yet. So let's drop this in. And then we'll e export the default here. OK. What are we looking at? So we're going to be missing a whole bunch of stuff. So I need a slug, which will replace this one. Mm -hmm. I need a title. I need, let's see, that's already there, the slug. What else are we missing? The date. Ooh, this is going to be a problem because we don't search for the date. So date. And then I need the description or the excerpt looks good right. to me so let's drop this in and then we'll take that excerpt okay so that should be everything we need i think mm -hmm. and then i can come back out here and i can import that so mm -hmm. let's import post preview from Components, post preview. And then can take this one and let's just work this out. Post preview. And that's going to take a slug, which is node field slug. Mm -hmm. It's going to need the title, which is going to be the title. We need date which is, oh, it says all the stuff that I need up there, which is node, <laughs> was it front matter date? Yeah, node.frontmatter.date, okay. which we didn't search for in our GraphQL, right? So that's not yeah, actually we'll going to exist, probably. We'll have to, we'll have to add that. that to the index. And then we need node.frontmatter.description for excerpt, which was node.excerpt. All right, did I get it all? I think this is just going to show up double, right? Because like it's just going to build the post preview. Well, okay. Um, oh yeah, it's not going to work right now because it's doubled up. So let me just delete that, and then what happens? Okay, so, so we're, in, cool. we're in good shape, but we're missing a date. So should I re-index with the date? Uh, so yes, but to answer your question first, I actually, we can like skip all this and make it really easy too. I wanted to see if it like build it. Uh, but if you go into hit, there's a, uh, there's an attribute called hit component. So you can actually just pass in hit component to hit and then use post preview as the kind of like result or not result, uh, as the variable. What was the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> and then you're, uh, it'll automatically load it into that component. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, let me fix, I, I fixed, broke a couple things here. So yeah, we need to make sure that we've got, let's see, I've got the rhythm, got the link. Um, then I can get rid of this. All right, so that should get us closer. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no explosions, I think. Always good. Minor, minor explosion. The key thing. Key prop always happens to me. I guess it's like, oh, so I know hard. what it is. It's because um, we're looping over this now. And that should be node field slug. And that means that in the post preview, we can drop the key because we're not actually using it. Amazing. OK, so that should solve that problem. OK, no more errors. And yes. Yeah. All right. So 
now we can rock and roll. We got our post preview component. And bang, bang. you said that in the hits, we can change the hit component. Yep. So you can do an attribute hit component. So H I T capital C yep, component uh, equals post preview. So actually what this is going to do is it's going to like pass the data that it receives from hits to post preview, but it's going to pass it with the, um, a hit attribute. So in the post preview component that we just built, we're actually going to need to move all the slug title, date, description, excerpt, et cetera, et cetera, um, behind hit because it's going to be hit dot slug hit dot title, et cetera, et cetera. You see? I so it's like you. hit dot front matter dot, yeah. Oh, crap. Okay. So. It should be easy to change, right? We can just yeah, move we, hit. Like, so we'll just need to probably change this out to be like, um, so we can chalk call this post. And then the thing mm -hmm. that I didn't do, is what I, what I need to do is uh, we'll keep the date and description inside of front matter. And then we're also going to need fields. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so actually let's just, let's not do it that way. We'll, we'll, instead of destructuring, we'll just actually write things out because that's going to make, I think everyone's life a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> and the, the title is also going to be in front matter. So this is going to be, or how did I set the title in here? There's like a, so we'll pull that out. We'll put that up here. And then down at the bottom, we need to make sure that we are actually finishing this component. Okay, so that's gonna be post. And then down here for the title, we've got that, but that'll be post front matter date, uh, post front matter description or post.excerpt mm -hmm. and then we can come in here and just change this out to be a post Perfect. okay so then now that we've got that we can come back here and say the post equals the node mm -hmm. and everything else can go away so well actually we don't even need that anymore is basically what i'm saying because the hits is going to populate the posts for us so like when the, oh. the hits result, remember when we saw like the list of hits, it's just going to take care of it. So it's just going to replace the component for the hit where it was just kind of like the plain text and then just put in our component. Instead. So you're saying, okay, so if I drop this out and then I would change mm -hmm. instead of post, we call this a hit. hit. Mm -hmm. I understand what's happening. Okay. You were trying to help me and I was trying to help <laughs> yeah, I was well. letting, I was letting you go. I was like, honestly, I want to see where this goes. It's, it's pretty dank. Okay. <laughs> so now... We got, let's see, no front matter of, let's see, slug of undefined. Hit.fields.slug, do we have that in our? Uh, we should, let's. Um, we can check our Algolia index and look in the fields too. If I just drop this in here, what happens? Hit, So we see front matter. Oh, we're not querying for the slug. So we need to change yeah. what's in here to include in both the date, date and the field mm -hmm. slug. Okay, so then knowing that, I can yarn build. Exciting. <laughs> Thrilling. Okay. And then- This is super fun. I feel like I'm part of like a documentary. You know what I mean? We're like solving a problem. It's like a mystery. <laughs> Exactly. That's, uh, I mean, that's what I'm going for here really is I, I really want this to be just riveting television. Um, okay. So we have, it's building, give it a second. We should then get everything sent up to Algolia here in a second. There we go. And all goes well, come on. Yeah. A little all right. circle thing here reminds me of like a Pokedex from back in like the early Game Boy days. You know what I'm talking about? Like the little... <laughs> Okay, so if we go Let's back go. in here, blogging. All right, so now oh, we fun. have front matter that includes the date. We've got the fields. We've got Perfect. the excerpt and the HTML. So which means if We're I run yarn develop again, we should have everything we, excuse me, everything we need in the hit to make this thing operate. 
And it appears that I forgot to uncomment the... Um, oh, we have to add the hit component back. Yeah, so I can add this hit component back. Whoa. All right. That, and then it looks like we don't need this anymore, so we can simplify that right out. Let's get rid and of let's it. Let's see what happens. Hey, look oh, at that. Oh, snap. All right, so this is cool. We got uh, one one small issue, which is that it's wrapping mm -hmm. everything in a UL, but we can fix that. But then if I start saying, like, blogging, it's limiting us down. If I say duck, really we have two posts in this that have duck. Like, come on. I know, that's just pretty crazy, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of duck stuff going on. No, nothing. Nothing about eating. Okay. I yeah. think I think there's like one about a mountain, right? On the Gatsby starter blog. Yeah. 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 So, so we can okay. actually get it to. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, we're we're just. I'm I'm feeling good about this. We're in good shape. We've got uh, like the custom SEO is showing up. Um, the date looks wrong. And mm -hmm. I'm curious why. So let's go look at what changed in here. Do we? I think it might be in our component, actually. I think when it's like rendering the date, it's rendering it as Algolia is receiving it, which is the, the time zone one, the TZ. Uh, but we can probably change that with like new date object or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how this was happening before. I wonder if I changed something. Um, Let's see. It's post preview, so I guess I guess we can just like you know what, for now, because it's not what I want to spend time on, let's just hit it with a shovel. Um Love it. do that and then we'll go to locale string. And I think that'll do what we want. Let's take a look. Close enough. I'm I'm gonna yeah. call that. I'm I am perfectly happy with that. Um, <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if we wanted to, we could play with that format, but I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it alone because that's not what we're here to learn today. So how would one add the, um, if I want to add like the highlighting stuff, mm -hmm. where do we go from here? So we actually have a widget for that too. So if we run back to the, the mystical docs, there's some pretty docs. good literature on the topic. All right. uh, so you can search highlights on the, the search highlighting snippeting okay um attributes mm. to highlight so it's going to be enabled on all the searchable attributes so this is just basically saying if you only wanted to limit it to certain things right gotcha uh but actually i think we're looking for the widget so maybe highlight widget in the search field instead there we go listen yep okay uh, so basically what, well, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna use this guy. Uh, so it's gonna look for the attribute to highlight and then we can like, kind of like, so where we imported the instant search, we can actually import highlight there too. And it's gonna like create a span, uh, and then it's going to highlight the span for us, or it's actually gonna italicize it. Okay. So I've got the highlight. Mm -hmm. So like right under hits. You can just do highlight uh, and then attribute, like what we probably want to highlight the the name of the blog, right? Like the title. So we probably want to do like title because it's going to be, it's going to imagine it as like a top level thing. So it's going to be attribute equals title effectively. Okay. So <laughs> attribute is title, oh, and, but that's not going to, it doesn't need to be. Like it's going to be what it, what it sees it in the index, right? So it's going to, oh, front matter dot title. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Okay. Front matter. And it doesn't matter that that's not defined. Um, yeah, no, maybe not. Wait, use it in, uh, it's just a string. Sorry. It's a string, not an object. Sorry. Uh, okay. it's, it's, it's just going to look for that in like a, like it's like searching it as JSON effectively. Uh, you need the hit. I don't think it's necessary. Oh, Tag I name. see. Uh, yeah, the hit yeah. is not necessary. Okay. Oh, wait, no, the no, hit wait. is necessary. Sorry, the hit is necessary. The tag name, non-highlighted tag name and separator aren't necessary. So for the hit, we're just going to pass in. Um, that's actually a great question. I have to look that up because I forgot. <laughs> and does this need <laughs> to be inside of the hits? Because it, it kind of seems like it would be... Um, I, I, uh, that is... Yeah, I don't know. 
That's a great question. And I am going to figure that out in about three seconds, maybe. Uh, highlights, where you at? Okay, so um, this is saying hit is hit, the attribute is name. Okay, so yeah, so for our hit, we're gonna pass in, um, actually, so it's, it is, it's gonna be in the component itself. So we're gonna, highlight is gonna be in the, the React component that we, we passed in for the hit component All argument. Right. So and have, then it's gonna- I have a question then. How, mm -hmm. do we, how do we continue using our post preview? Uh, so we can continue using our post preview. Basically what we're gonna do is we're going to, the post preview, let's say is surrounded by like a P tag, like a paragraph tag. Uh -huh. And then we're going to inside the P tag, put the highlight widget. We're going to pass our hit object. So actually, yeah. So highlight is in this, is in this file, not the other one. My bad. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So I'm going to import highlight mm -hmm. from Algolia. Nope. React. The React instant search DOM. Instant. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, and then in here. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, for the dangerously set inner HTML, so it's like, I think it's looking for the description. If I can't find the description, it's using the excerpt. Yeah. So we can actually, um, can we override that with a widget? I'm not actually sure. I think like, cause like. Well, we can, I, I think I what we're gonna have to do is just like feed the hit in here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. But like um, dangerously set inner HTML, is that necessary? Like what is that? Well, it's so that it actually parses the, any markup in here. So we don't necessarily need you. Okay. Um, because it looks like Algolia is stripping that in the result. Right, so I in that case, let's just clear this out and use a P tag. And then uh, in the P tag, we'll actually just go ahead and uh, put the hit or the highlight component uh, and then we'll pass in the hit, which is our the thing that we have above. And then uh, the attribute will be the name or title front matter. Wait, is it front matter dot? Well, we've got front matter dot title. Um, right. Well, this is the description though. That's actually going to be highlighted though. Remember, because we're oh, I guess because okay, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. We're, we're we're trying to replace the description, so we want yeah, we want front matter yeah let's hit dot because we okay let's. Try this and see what happens. Um, yeah, let's just take it a shot. Okay, so, so if it's, you search something, it's looking promising. We lost our custom description, um, but <laughs> no. let's search blogging. Oh, okay, there it is. It's so we're getting good. we're getting better. Let's change this out. I want to use the what was it? The tag. Um, we want the tag name. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use mark and that should give us like a highlighter look i think when i do highlighting and i'm trying to actually do like a highlighter i actually usually just use css so i'll change the background to because like there's a class right there that ai has highlight highlighted and then yeah. i'll just override it with my own local css it's to weird, change though, the background color for some reason it didn't pick up my change because it should be wrapping this in a in a mark now. Um, oh, it says we added mark to index.js, not the post preview. Twitch chat saves the day again. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. So <laughs> let me let me just actually get rid of this because that's going to confuse the hell out thanks, of me. Thanks, Twitch chat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Twitch. So let's add it over here. Okay. And then out here, what we should see is. Yeah, so it uh, the mark tag is great because it it kind of adds that. Um, let's do away. Um, so so for now, since all of our attributes are searchable too, like some of the things might not highlight because they might not actually be in the excerpt, right? Mm -hmm. So like, like for example, post right there is it's probably matching on the title, my second post, right? Um, but it's not highlighting because we only highlight the description. And so, what, so if I wanted to do this, let's say I wanted to do this for the title as well, then I mm -hmm. can take this and I could say, let's put that in here, but I'm going to use the, the, actually, how would I do title? this? Front matter dot title. 
Yeah, but then I lose the this. Mm. So like that works, but I lose my fallbacks. Does it work if it clicks it? Like if it does it does it fail if it clicks? Oh no, it works. Oh no, it works. I don't know why it selected the whole thing, but <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so it it does work. But what I'm curious about is how are we like if I want to pass in custom stuff, if I want to modify that data a little bit, what are my options? Do I have any non highlighted tag name separator? Okay, so we can customize this. But what does that mean? Connect highlight. Oh, so we would need to do like a higher order component here, I think. Right? Yes. That's my thinking. Well, so higher order components are generally for when you're trying to do uh, like CSS-y type stuff, you know what I mean? When you really want to go through and like change all the components to like look exactly the way that you want them to. So basically a connector and a higher order component in this case mm -hmm. uh, would allow you to just access the data and then you do whatever you want with it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, like so, we that, kinda, so we're, we're kind of hitting like, it looks like you, uh, I believe this is Ryan Kubik in the, the chat is uh, asking a question that I have as well, which is like, so right now mm -hmm. we're showing the excerpt, but what mm -hmm. if we want to pull up the relevant part of the, the, the content? So like here, mm -hmm. if I go in and I search and I'm like hooks, it shows me like these, but like I've seen it where it shows the, like the paragraph or like a sentence that contains the, the searched material. Like that's a problem right. I have on my um, on my site too, where I can only show the excerpt. But like, what if I want to show the paragraph? So you know, if I that's if a, I'm in here and I search yeah. for you know italic mountains, how do we make sure that this is what shows up in that preview? Right. This is kind of what I alluded to a bit earlier, which is the more advanced use case of Algolia by okay. using distinct operators. So basically, what's going to happen is that you can imagine. It's going to split that into like a tree, right? And all of the little node children are going to point back to the high fault slug, let's say, right? Okay. So when you search italic mountains, it's actually just retrieving the record that is like that paragraph, if that makes sense. Right. So each of these paragraphs or each section or whatever you decide for your own personal blog, I mean, this has, you know, lists, this has titles, this has paragraphs. So we could probably pretty easily go through the HTML and say that each one paragraph is like, um, its own record, right? right? And if we do that, then it's like a whole thing. So it's like, like the, my example of Algolia is that it's kind of like, you know, when you're in Pallet Town, like in Pokemon, and you're like, it's just, it's chill. Like there's no yeah. wild Pokemon around, like you're having a good time. So you can do that and like have a great experience with Algolia. You can stay on the dashboard, you can add widgets, you know what I mean? You can get the working search that we already built. Mm -hmm. If you wanna go hardcore and like use distinct and stuff like that too, and like higher order components, that's totally available as well. You know what I mean? You can take on the Elite Four. Right. And like let's, build a, build so your, yeah. We might not be able to actually style this up or anything, but let's get weird. Like, let's try this. Let's get weird. Um, let's do it. All right, so if I wanna do that, if I wanna split this into multiple indices, how would I do such a thing? So my initial assumption, because w the one thing that we did that might be a bit of a problem is that we use GraphQL, right, to fetch the data that we pass to the build. Yep. Right? So like in terms of actually breaking that into components, I think what we might need to do is like go into the mapping function where we're transforming things, mm -hmm. grab the HTML, split it into its all separate nodes, because all Algolia is expecting really is like an array, right? So it's right. like, if we just feed it an array of whatever, we can do whatever we want, you know what I mean? So we could transform each paragraph in a post into its own thingy-majiggy, okay. <laughs> its own record. All right, and then, so, if uh, I, so if I like pseudocode this out a little bit, what, what mm -hmm. we're saying is like right now, we're doing like the posts that we're sending back are like, you know, the, um, like the fields and all that, right? And we just do that for each one. So we're sending back three. 
And so what you're saying is that if we break this up where we say like, we've got slug and that'll be like, hi folks. And then out here we've got like paragraph and that is, you know, like whatever the italic mountains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I do another one. And this one is for like another sentence. Mm -hmm. And this one is for another sentence. We should be able to take these and turn them into, oh, I made this, it's just poorly formed. Just maybe bad at code, everybody. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so it. I don't even know how you code live. I'm so scared we've of that. Got, <laughs> <laughs> but so basically what we're, what we're looking at is like, I can create multiple instances of this slug. And each one of these paragraphs can be a, um, like a piece of content and what you're telling me is that if we so if we set it up like this um we could even just do it like this like mm -hmm. excerpt and then when we get into this post preview instead of showing like the front matter date or whatever we would just show or here we would show the front matter dot like selection or something so here it's the, yeah, the excerpt much. But so I could take the description and make it into an excerpt. I can take the the excerpt, make it into an excerpt, and then I can take each paragraph out of the HTML and make it into an excerpt and index all of that. Is that right? That's kind of my guess. I, you're ninety five percent of the way there. I would say the only thing that we have to add is like there's like a distinct field. So if you go to the configuration in your database or in Algolia index thing, Algolia. Nope, that's not it. Um, so here. over in our dashboard, yeah, and then configuration. in configuration tab, so it's here. to the right of browse. Uh, then you should see uh, something for distinct somewhere. I don't remember where. I actually haven't used it in a while. Uh, uh, deduplication deduplication and, grouping. and grouping. There we go. So basically this distinct is going to say like, okay, this is like the attribute for distinct is going to be like, like we said, slug. And then it's going to say like, okay, so this distinct is the slug. It's like kind of like the ID, right? And okay. then it's going to add everything out to that effectively. Okay, so we're gonna have to set that up after we do this because we're gonna change. Yeah. we're gonna change the shape of this. So yeah. what I want to do then is I'm going to. All right, so I'm gonna set up. We're gonna um, map the map. We're gonna, we're gonna be mapping the map. That's right. mapping the map. <laughs> all right. So our steps are gonna be um, one. We want to break each post into an array of searchable text chunks then we want to um return a flattened array of well okay so is it gonna is it gonna flatten this array because if i return like i don't think it's gonna of, flatten the array i don't think we should risk that i think we should flatten the array because what will end up happening is like i'm gonna be returning like post one post two Right? Mm -hmm. Is it smart enough to pick mm -hmm. to pick that up? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> we could probably pass in a reducer that does it for us, though, so we can reduce the results that we get and like append it to like our overall. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm scoring. overthinking this. I was thinking it was running this per record. It's running this once per result. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna break each post and then we're gonna return a flattened array of all indices. So we will start by looping through the posts. And then once we loop through the posts, we can, um, or actually, I guess I could just do the reducer. And we'll call this indices and post. And then we're gonna start out with an empty array. All right, this is gonna be fun because me writing a reducer for memory is usually not a good time for anyone. So what hey, we want, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we want is we want the um we want the excerpt mm -hmm. oops then we want the description if it exists then we want each paragraph and actually we can skip the excerpt because the excerpt is just the first paragraph so we'll right. do just the description if it exists, and then each paragraph. And in order to do the paragraphs, we need to be able to like split by paragraph. 
Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Here's a cheeky little thing I was just thinking of a second ago. So remember how when we were discussing GraphQL at the top of the hour, and we were saying like, oh, look at this crazy HTML, and then mm -hmm. Algolia already formatted it. So here's what I'm thinking, and I want to get your opinion on this. What if we downloaded the data that Algolia already has, and so we don't need to run the GraphQL query again, and then feed that through, no, I guess that wouldn't work, would it? Well, we'd have to like Where upload it and then download it. And I think that Algolia is parsing it like on the fly because if you look at um, here. Well, because like we're going to need to map the paragraphs manually is basically yeah. what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so, like, but, like check this out. So already... if I, so here it's like doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But if I open it, like something is happening where it's pulling those pieces out manually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if there's a way to just have Algolia return that, because this would be sick if we could just use this, but it doesn't That'd look like tight. it's given us that. That's why I was thinking though, cause like I wanted to kind of like effectively just go grab these paragraphs because it's already kind of clean, you know what I mean? And then we can kind of just like say for each opening P tag and closing P tag, but I think it's gonna be a bit more complex than that. So maybe we should just, yeah, just kind of like go forward. Because yeah. like it's gonna have to like skip the GraphQL thing and like it's gonna be weird. So <laughs> let's just try and do it with the, yeah. the double reducer. Let me try. Let me try something real quick. I before we do any of this, let me just revert back to where we were. Um, do do do. I should have like, committed this so that it was all right. So we are just returning the nodes. All right. So we're back to where we were. That's all good. And then I've got mm -hmm. this component preview. But what I'm gonna do in the preview is I'm actually going to use the HTML. And I wanna see if it's smart enough. I think this is gonna look terrible, but I, I wanna see if it's smart enough to do... Oh, rip. Mm -hmm. Nope. So I was hoping that maybe it would do something where it would like parse out the, the content. Um, but it's, so that's something that Algolia is doing like on the UI side, um, right. which is like maybe something to pass up to the, the team that that feature, like this feature where I can search and get this, uh, if we could just have that, that would save me a ton of manual labor that we're about to do. Um, all right, so plan. 18 minutes on the clock. On Let's the see clock. if we can make this work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna do an excerpt. And the way that I wanna do it is I'm going to, let's re re-implement all this, get back to where we were. Sure. All right, fast so now, <laughs> So now I'm going to, um, I'm going to take each paragraph. So I need a way to, uh, Java or let's see, node strip tags, HTML. Um, so we've got a strip tags. Wow. 189,000 downloads a week. Okay. So this looks good, I think. And what's this going to give us? This is going to. Oh, it looks like it's right. The output looks good. I like it. Yeah. That gives us what we want. Um, mm -hmm. all right, so I'm going to grab this. However, what we need to do is we need to be able to split the, the output into multiple pieces. So I'm going to take, I think they did that with the new line one, the last one on the list of that, uh, examples. So you see HTML array new line. Ooh, interesting. Okay. All right. So the only catch with that would be that it's, you know what, that's close enough for our purposes. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, uh, paragraph chunks is post.html, and we're going to do strip tags on that. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to split it and add a new line. Yeah, okay. And then I'm going to split that, or wait, that's not going to work because it's going to grab all of our new lines. So I need to add something that's going to be ridiculous that no one would use. So I'm going to put in like, <laughs> okay. So that way, that was my World of Warcraft name. <laughs> and then I can do, um, like a split. Is that how this works? Yeah. And then I can use this triple X split here. And that is going to give me paragraph chunks split by where the tags were. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. then using those, 
I can do something like, uh, let's do P let's see, const um, chunks equals uh, P chunks dot map. And we will take the chunk and return the slug is going to be the post.fields.slug. And the, um, we'll just, well, let's call it chunk. That's the same be. excerpt, right? Yeah, we can, I feel right. like, yeah, we could, we can pass excerpt. in everything pretty much the same except the chunk itself, right? Because that's the only thing that's going to be different, right? Like it's yeah. the rest of the data is going to be the same. Well, so, I mean, I, yeah, I guess we could do that as I could just throw it in as the, like I could spread the post and then add the chunk. Yeah, but we're not mm -hmm. going to use, we're not going to use any of that. Um, I, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of solving this problem with a hammer, but I'm going to go ahead and, and just continue <laughs> to do that. And then when everything's if, a nail, right? Yeah. Uh, so if um, post dot front matter dot description we will also chunks dot append uh, or no concat I think is what we want. Yeah. Um, wait, strings to it. No. Append. Man, what is it? Where are you at, MDN? MDN. I think push. Array is prototype concat. Well, no, we, we want it concat because we want it to be, um, this is, uh, it's immutable. Or, oh, right. You know what? Uh, do I hate this? Do I hate, uh, am I going to mute? Yeah, I'm going to mutate data. So you are correct. We are going to push. Um, I had an again. interview question once that was like about the return type of push or something like that and mutations, and I just didn't. I didn't get the question. Like it was, it was a train wreck. It was one of those interview questions where they were just like, "So, what do you think of like push versus like append in terms of like an inline list?" And I was like sweating because it was one of those live coding <laughs> things, and I'm just not good at this. So I was like, "I don't know." Like, oh god, <laughs> I was, it was so stressful. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spread the existing indices, which are the ones that it, at first it'll be empty, and then it'll be whatever we put in. And then I'm going to spread the chunks, and that gives us a single flat array of all the indices. Um, mm -hmm. So if I am correct, what will happen here is we're going to get a whole chunk of HTML. Um, I can also drop this excerpt, and then I'm going to need to include the date. Yes. Yes, indeed. So we need the date. The date is going to be post uh front matter date and the title which is going to be post front matter title and i'm not going to bother with the um the fallback to slug because all of our posts do indeed have a title so i'm just going to leave it um and that i believe gives us everything that we need so let's see ever that. import the actual library for the strip tags <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just like, you just started using it. I was like, word. <laughs> like, All right. So let's add strip tags. And then in here, I can, oops, uh, strip tags equals require strip tags. Good, good, good. All right. So now, Let's run a build. I'm kind of afraid of it just like indexing. I wish we could just okay. console that long. Fingers Thank crossed. You. This is going to work. Crossed. Duke's up. <laughs> we got to hold it. We got to hold the fingers. Crossed. I'm not, I'm not letting go. I I'll never let go, Jack. Um, I'll never let go. <laughs> it's taking long. <laughs> it's taking longer than we thought. <laughs> Come on. Pull this together. Show me that I wrote a reducer right on the first try. There's no way. That'd be amazing. There's no way this worked. Okay. Okay. It's, so it didn't it, it indexed fail. something. It indexed something. So we're going to go into our indices. We're going to look at the browse. And what have I done? I have done. There's only three records. So, okay, so it looks like wrong. nothing happened. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't pick up the thing that I did. So that's incorrect. Did we save the file? 
thought I did. Did I? Did I forget? No, I, I did it. Oh, okay. Um, it didn't even complain, which is interesting. Like it was like yeah. Just... Not only did it not complain, it like let's see, query, exe- executing query, splitting into zero jobs. Okay, I did something mm-hmm. wrong. So so you can do console logs in here. So yeah. like when it's building, we would be able to see what's actually happening in the chunks and stuff like that. Yeah, so if you want to console, console log, log chunks. our chunks, and let's try this again. We're gonna build. That's gonna be a bunch of objects. You might want to do JSON string about it, whatever. Oh, <laughs> you're so damn it. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Should I just quit this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah I would. It's doing this thing. It's already going. Well, also, one of the things I would like to oh, mention hey. is that... Oh. All right. So oh, this cool. did what we wanted it to do. Oh, interesting. Hmm, that's not what I wanted, but whatever. Where's um, our chunk at, though? Isn't it supposed to have the chunk thingy? Well, this is the chunk, is the, the excerpt. Oh, so is excerpt. Okay. This seems odd that it did that, but I guess that's fine. Um, technically correct <laughs> all right so it looks like it should have worked then huh oh it's like there's some blank ones too Ooh, and undefined cool. and stuff like that okay so i think what we need to do then is we can do like uh we'll do chunks chunks dot filter and we can just make sure that oh wait no we want um do like chunk dot excerpts excerpt uh, exists I don't know we can you got dot undefined like that I think in uh, JavaScript you can actually use the double bang operator and it'll automatically check if something is undefined that's yeah that works too any any of those solutions would probably <laughs> be just fine and i also um, like saying double bang operator <laughs> <laughs> bang bang um there's a conf called bang bang conf, conf uh and i like that let's see so really? this is going to be filtered and so then we'll change this out for filtered and like in a perfect world we would be also filtering out like those um the new lines and stuff like that. I mean, there's some there's some definite cleanup to be done here. I also want to just check, like, why didn't this show up? Because it really should have. Yeah, I don't I don't understand why that's happening either. I think if I had to make a guess, is that uh, it's like it's like that there might be too many objects, but that can't be it. Like, it should complain. There's only like right? fifty or hundred objects or something like that. Yeah. Um. Also, maybe it's well. It's passing in two arrays. Or is it passing in the? Is this flattened? It's only passing in the one. Let's because let's we're returning. See. So, like with a reducer, right? It doesn't it add to the existing thingy majiggy. Yeah. So the with the reducer, what should come back is oh wait 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 wait. So we got the data reduce, but we're not returning that. Uh, oh, ha, ha, ha. Yes. okay. <laughs> Good catch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so I'm not even going to bother with that one. Then we, uh, this is this is now going to work, I believe. Um, fingers crossed again. Try that one more time. Yeah, fingers crossed. We're returning data. It's going to work for real. Come on, reducer. Let's do. Oh, did a job. Did a job, didn't explode. Now if we reload, we have 102 102 records records and actual stuff. So that means we can come in here now to configuration. We're going to set deduping. So we do want to do that and we're going to do it on the slug. So that should give us the right kind of searching. And then we just have to go back into our post preview and uh, update this to make sure that it's using the right stuff. So we're gonna do hit.date, we're gonna do uh, title, we're gonna do, I think that's it, hit.title or hit.slug. I'm not even using title. Oh, we're not even using that anymore. It's, yeah, what are we doing? Yeah. Really? All right, so this should be good. We've got hit.date, hit.thing, hit.slug. That was the other one we needed. I'm down to try it. 
Let's give it a shot. shot. Let's see what happens. Um, all right, boot it up. Yarn develop. Nobody got to the moon Nobody without giving it a shot. Five minutes. Let's see if we can get this finished up. Okay. Show me potato salad. Um, let's go to Talic Mountains. Oh, snap. Wow. All right. So this is not perfect because what we're doing here is we are, we're like solving the problem in a very kludgy way. Um, mm -hmm. But what's, what's cool about this is it shows that the, like the concept is there. Um, so what you would want to do is you'd want to change the way that you're stripping tags to only like break on paragraphs, for example, and then you could index the paragraphs or like in a, what would probably be an ideal sense, you would look for like a length of characters and at, like do the ellipses on either side. Um, that is, you know, that's, that's a lot. So there are that's ways definitely. that we could, <laughs> there are ways that we could definitely customize this out and make it, um, a little more like functional. Uh, but in the, in the context of like what we're doing, this proves out a way to solve that problem. We just have to get a little bit further down the path of how do we really want to chunk this content? Because, you know, when we say italic mountains, the reason that this is only saying italic mountains is because it was surrounded by the M tags and we split mm -hmm. on those. So, you know, they ended up being split. So if we ignored the M tags, then we could have used it. Uh, we'd have to figure mm -hmm. out how to do the dangerously set inner HTML inside of a highlight component to make sure that it didn't show the M tags, but like we could do that with the higher order component that we found here, the, um, wherever it was highlight. Yeah. There's the connected highlight. I think it was where you could do this and then you can kind of set up all of that stuff. But so the, those are, it, we're, we're way too short on time to try to do anything like that. But that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty slick, man. Like we did in 90 minutes, uh, what I would consider to be a reasonably like functional search. Um, yeah, we rocked it. It was, it was definitely an experience, especially near the end there. And like, like with the, the, the distinct thing, I didn't think it was going to be that smoothly. I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with the result. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this too. I think, I mean, we, we clearly, there's some fine tuning to be done cause we've lost our excerpt on this one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, and then um, Ryan just said in the, the chat that the Gatsby Transformer remark returns the AST, um, mm. which is, that could be just one last thing to poke at. If we go with the HTML AST, that gives us a lot of very interesting opportunities here because we can basically jump through and say, hey, for every paragraph, give me all of this. The content. value, the children right. value, yeah. And so we could skip through that. The, the catch here is that like we're, we've got a child and then we're into like an A element. And so we could split it up by paragraphs and then like run the markdown parser to get the output of each paragraph. A lot of, a lot of stuff that could well, be done. They have, um, they have types there too. So we could just say for exactly. type text, then like grab it. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of ways that we could potentially dive in and do this. Um, but you know, We've also got issues like these uh, new lines wrapped in here would be a little bit weird. And so and like um, new lines for like a blog, like paragraph and then new line and then new blog. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of things that you would, you'd kind of have to look at how your particular site was set up and, and play with the ways that you would want to split up that content. But um, in general, this is the way that you would go. You just start getting deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, this, this particular transformer here, because you can do a whole lot in here. Um, whatever you decided was the right thing, you can split it up such in such a way. Um, with that being said, Ram, man, this is fun. I, I really appreciate Jason, you coming on. Thanks so much. So thank you so uh, much for having me. I know you're not, you're not like a Twitter user. Um, <laughs> if people want to connect with you, how should they do so? Yeah, I actually got rid of my social media recently. Um, I might be back in the future, who knows, but, uh, I would say honestly through GitHub, uh, I GitHub doesn't have like a messaging system, but I'm github.com uh, slash Ramsey's. Uh, so you can find me there, uh, with just yeah. S E S oh, S E S. Yeah. Uh, I also have a blog at usrbinblog.com. Uh, usrbinblog.com. 
Yeah, so you can, it's like a WordPress blog that I've been working on. I was, I initially had a GitHub blog and then I wanted to like become more broad about personal de development and stuff like that too. So yeah. that's kind of what I've been working on. Cool. Um, but yeah, thank you again so much for having me. This has really been wonderful and you've alleviated a lot of my, my assaged a lot of my fears about coding live and maybe I'll <laughs> attempt to become a, a live stream coder in the future. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much, Bram. Um, and then for anybody who is interested in future events, go to twitch.tv slash Jay Langstorff and then uh, hit up this events page. We've got some really fun stuff coming up. Um, we're going to do Netlify functions next week with Sean Wang. I'm really excited for that one. Uh, we're going to do awesome. some Airtable stuff, do some custom CMSs. We got all sorts of fun things coming up. So, um, you know, hit, hit the portfolio or hit the page, hit that follow button, um, look for future streams and we'll see you next week on, uh, whatever day it is at 9 AM on Thursday. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. <laughs>